Um, you joined American Crime. Yes. Big moment. Big moment. That was right before I was going to quit acting. Why? Yeah, I was going to quit. I was over it. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do it no more. Honestly. Why? I just was sick of it. I was sick of it. I was I was tired of it. And, and you know. Wow. And at that time, I was, how old was I? Shit. I don't know. 2015, right? 2015. I hate math. Let's just say yeah. I was young. <laughs> and I was young and I was like, you know, kind of maybe there's a few times that I was like, Rejected on some shit, and I was like, I'm sick of this. Like, oh, I'm, okay. done. I'm done. I don't want to do it no more. And then there was that was the last audition before I was gonna quit. They only got one more. I was like, man. So I didn't look at the script. I intentionally tried to bomb this audition. What? And inside of the room, after I tried to bomb it, like I got the paper in like in my hand, like just reading it off the shit, like blah 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 blah. blah. I got down there, like. <gasps> Oh my no. God, we're, we're gonna send you straight to network. That was one of the best performances we've I said, what? Oh my God. Are you God. joking me? So they picked me. And I, I literally, and that's never happened by the way. Any job that I've ever studied for and I'm fucking in the mirror, oh, let's get the shit right. I'm doing character work, whatever. And go there, that's never happened. Right in the audition, they're like, we're sending you straight to network. That's like five auditions away, typically, when you audition. You're like, audition, you get a callback, director, callback, producer, callback. Oh, let's go to network, now we're doing it again. They were like, from the first audition, we're sending you straight to network, come back in like a week or whatever. And so then I was like, a mix and match, and then I got that. And that that's why I'm still acting, because that experience. Wow. Regina King. Right. Andre, Andre 3000, 3000. That nigga. <laughs> we can't, I mean, I could go on all day about him. Yo. Just like. Just crazy. A unicorn, really. Yeah. Of people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just a different type of dude. And I've obviously respected him before that, but after that, just and it wasn't even things he told me directly or what he do, just watching him move. You know what I'm mm. saying? Watching him walk through a room or like who he's talking to, what he's interested in. Or one of the greatest things that I took from him was he was drawing. And I was like, yo, that's fire. He's like, Yeah, what I do is I don't look at the page and I'll like do like this, scramble, and then he'll look back at it and I'll try and draw something out of it. And I said, Whoa. Whoa. And yeah, so now I do like occasionally to like <laughs> calm myself down, but just shit like that though. Like yeah. how deep is that? You could take that a hundred different ways on how to do life. 1, you know what I'm saying? Like make make the most out of what you got. Stop trying to control everything. Like right. those are things that I picked up when I totally when he did that. But also John really, the director of American Crime, was, you know, he was like, yo, uh, he pushed me, pushed me hard. And I was like getting pissed. But I was like, oh, that's why he was doing it when I saw it back. I was like, oh. Oh, because you had to cry, right? Well, yeah, but that's not, that part oh. was easy. It was okay. like other stuff, you know, little tedious like stuff where I was like, why does he keep caring about that? And then I saw it back and I was like, oh, and that's when I want to start directing my own music videos because mm. I saw how he was doing it. I was right. like, oh, that's, you know, it's about how you see the world. Right. That's, that's how he saw the world. Now I'm like, oh, but if I want people to see it like this, I've got to have them. I mean. Right. For so sure. it was all kind of meant. To be. Right. Like, how was it having Andre play your dad? It was amazing. Like I said, I'm playing music. I remember we were at this, uh, I think, Super Bowl. I had went to Super Bowl at uh, his, I don't know if it's his house or might have been his house. <laughs> I forget. But it was me, him, Big Boy was there. We all were, like, in the basement. It was just kind of, like, wild to me. Yeah. You know? I couldn't really believe it. Still. It's just crazy. What was his reaction to your music? Oh, he was like, yo, this is fire, man, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, like. Being a big bro, like, yo, keep doing this. Hey, do that. You know? Um, you know, he's like, I made my best music when I wasn't lit. You know what I'm saying? I was like clean. I was blah, blah, blah. Oh, I was wow. Like, wow. So that was a tidbit, too, I took. And oh, I was wow. Like, hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's cold. But uh, yeah, that definitely lit a fire under me just to push harder, you know? Because the fact that I come from where I come from and was in, in a car, in a room, in a scene with that nigga is like- Right. Wild in That's the studio, you know what I'm saying? Right. I remember one of our closing nights, we all went to the studio and everybody was just playing music. And I was just like, Where, where am I at? Where am I big boy, I played, I played Big Boy How That Sound. That was the one he lost his mind to. That really? was that's from Rough Drafts, uh, one. one. Thank you, Rough Drafts <laughs> One. And I played that, and he was like, Yo, who's that? I was like, That's me. He's like, This ain't you. I was like, Yeah, how that sound. He was like, Yo, that right there. So he was super dope, man, super kind. And then, yeah, it's just. I don't know what I'm saying. Then Superfly, you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like, I met him then oh. when I was doing American Crime and all that. And then to come back around to Super, it's just, it was right. trippy. Man, should we talk about Superfly real quick? Sure, sure. I mean, you know, big movie on the big, big screen. It was dope, man. I was super thankful. I recorded Rough Drafts 1 while I was actually filming that. Crazy. Um, 
And that's why my hair in all those videos, you know, were like all straight and rocked out because I'm like, yo, I got to go to set and trade my shit again so I can cut it in them. Right. So I really embrace that side. And that's the thing. Like, I always make music about where I'm at in time. Mm. You know, I was on a set. I was on a big movie at 21. 20. Yeah, I was 20 or 21. I was playing like 28, 29 in the movie. Oh, wow. And, you know, it was my first time leading a movie. And so all that music is like, you know, everybody thinks they know my life. Everybody's telling me to slow down, but I'm 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 on the lead of a movie. I'm in the club. These chicks are like I don't even you know what I'm saying yeah. all of that stuff is so real, right? At the time, so uh, you know the more that people like know the story and see kind of everything that was going on, the music makes even more sense. Totally. you know about where I was at, right? Um, even that is that all I am to you is a song I wrote. I remember I was out there shooting, and I was like in the club, and there was these girls and they were coming by. And they were like, yo, we can come in, we can get some bottles. And I was like, that's the first thing you ask? Like, right. you didn't want to come hang out and just say, like, it's that's all I am to you is just another dude in another right. club that's going to make you, have, like, it's going to allow you to have a good time or something. Right. So I was really like, you know, the music was just pouring out I feel when you. I was doing that. But for sure, it was dope, man. That was a great experience. I met a lot of uh, brothers that I met Michael K. Williams, RIP to him, right. uh, Jason Mitchell. Uh, Shout out X, shout out everybody that was a part of that. But yeah, man, it was definitely a growing experience for me, you know? Right. How so was, it's a lot. How was it? Because I think I went to the movies for that one. Mm -hmm. How was it just seeing yourself on the- Seeing it was wild. Seeing it with your grandma's even more yeah. wild. Uh, she <laughs> was like, Yo. when the threesome scene came on, she, I was like, grandma, close your eyes. Uh <laughs> don't look. Please don't look. I'm crying. Yeah, my papa was there. I think he might have been laughing or something. He might have been like, I'm crying. You know what I'm saying? That was tight. Uh, uh, my dad, my dad's, my dad's, <laughs> we're working on his emotion expression. You know, you know, anybody, you know, especially being a, you know, a father, you're like, I don't want my kids to see me cry. So he just laughed for a long uh, time. was trying to like not to cry. I was like, you like when I came on the screen, he just started laughing. He was like, <laughs> and just was losing. I was like, dad, what? He was like, I just can't believe, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so that was, that's always cool, man. That's awesome. I think, how did it feel to have Future do the soundtrack? It was cool, man. Future's future. That's a legendary. So, yeah, yeah. It was a. Uh, it was super dope, man. We walk on makes. They didn't pay me for that video. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. They used me all through the video. I don't remember getting a check or anything oh, for that. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> ah! Oh, that was tight. I think I've been seeing comments. People are asking for Superfly too. Yeah. That's a no for me, but maybe, <laughs> who knows? Maybe down the line, it just makes sense. But right now, right. it's it's a different time. I'm, I got my mind focused on different things. Like what? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. This new album, for sure. Rough okay. Drafts 3. Oh, wow. Yeah, this man. third installment coming? Yeah, third installment. Okay, cool. The trilogy. It's uh, it's Rough Drafts 3. The guy on the side is like okay. a little tagline. So basically, it's just about a guy who's in love with a girl who's in a relationship. Oh, wow. Is you know that a real story? Huh? Is that a real story? Sure. You could say that. I've been in a few situations like that. Oh, okay. I'm not proud of it, but yeah. <laughs> that's where I was at in life. It's about learning, you know, growing. But that's right. the thing, too. All, a lot of this stuff, a lot of my music, you know, is is made and then it doesn't come out till a different time, you know? So it's sometimes funny. I was even talking to my brother. Some stuff I made, like on Rough Drafts 1, made sense to me like two days ago. I was listening right. to it. Oh, and I was like, wow. oh, this song just really hit. Whoa. Yeah. Spoken to, I talked about like having a drop top before I had one. And then I was like in one listening to the song that I made when I had it. I was like, oh, oh shit. Okay. Shit like that. But um, so yeah, that's what it's about. And it's, you know, it's real. There's so many people and we put so much pressure on ourselves, relationships, all these things. For and sure. uh you know, you love who you love. Right. And you can't help it at that time. And that person can't help it sometimes. They might right. be with someone that like, yo, I'm with this person, but I love you. I might right. be staying with this person because we have time, but I like, you know, who knows what the real- it's complicated. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's about. And it's going to be side A, side B. Oh, okay. I'm going to give the fans more of this time because I, during the pandemic, I didn't put an album out. Yeah. Which is a no-no. I was very that, pissed. Why didn't you? Uh, I, just, I just think a lot was going on. I yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I was filming or something, but I just couldn't do it. Right. Um, so I'm gonna make sure this is a little more lengthy, more more songs, and um, I'm super stoked, dude. I think this is like the most. This is the most bangers I've had on one project. Like okay. I make a lot of music, like you know, and heartfelt shit, and you know, write out poetic type stuff. But this is like all like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so it yeah. feels good. It feels good because there's there's so many sides of me musically. You know For what I'm saying? Sure. You got the love don't change side. It's like the 
emotional ballad that's, you know, kind of Ed Sheeran-esque. Right. And then I've got the ego side of me where I want to just turn up. I don't want to turn my song on. I'm going to cry. You know, yeah, I want to just turn yeah. on and be like, hey, I'm fucking driving to the club, whatever. Right. And feel good. Uh, and, you know, I want to make it too for girls to get ready to going out. For sure. Let's put some go out music on. Yeah. yeah. I think my favorite music of yours is the bedroom music. Though. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. I like that too. We vibing. <laughs> That's because you nasty, Trevor. Nah, That's why nah, you're even. nasty, I'm dude. Dead. You want the nasty shit. I got that too. You know, nasty shit's Bouts on there. Bounce to be okay. <laughs> Bounce to be. You know when you listen to a project and you just, that one song, you just yeah. listen on repeat. Yes. You know? Absolutely. But how did it feel to release Love Language? That was your debut, the, right? Yeah. Uh, or... That's They called it that. Okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> I feel like every, every time I put music out, it's never not trying to be the best version right, right, right. at the I time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I never just be like, oh, this is just whack music. Let's give it out to the fans. Like every time I'm like, yo, let me do the best I can do. Let me write the songs that are me. Let me be real. Um, but the love language was sick, man. I think I made it in a time. A lot of it was created during the pandemic time. Right. And during the George Floyd time and during oh, all wow. this shit going on in the world. And I'm like, where is the motherfucking love Black Eyed Peas shout out? Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But like, where's that? Where's mm -hmm. that? And um, I even remember something that really stuck with me, why I wanted to make an album like that too, was Deion Cole. He was doing a stand up and he was like, remember when songs, love songs used to be like, epic like niggas like saying i'll cross an ocean for you or I'll, I'll i'll walk a mountain like where's the love at he's like now it's just a bitch i'm trying to fuck you you know yeah. what i'm saying like there's no like ah like yeah, yeah, passion yeah. or like for you know sure. just epicness stuff and so i wanted to make an album that was bringing it back to that like just some love songs like you know that everybody can listen to and that's real Facts. You know what I'm saying uh love don't change is one of my favorite songs on there because it really is like intro track yeah, the intro track. That is a song that kind of, you know, got me through some stuff. Right. And uh, it's a song about people who got me through some stuff. Right. So whether it's my brother, or it's my mom, my family, people in my life, right. God, For a sure. relationship I was in. For sure. You know, it, those are the people I leaned on. And I'm right. like, damn, to have that is what pushed me to keep going. So whatever people's, you know, goal is, whether it's music, whether it's you want to be a doctor or right. whatever, uh, you got to keep pushing. For sure. So, so a song like that helps.